You're listening to Talk of the Nation Science Friday. I'm Ira Flato. This hour we'll be talking about uh, two seemingly different worlds. One, the world of the super big, like our universe, and the other world of the super small, like subatomic particles. Uh, one, we have particle physicists looking at the tiniest bits of our world with the uh, They have science fiction-like names. You have quarks and leptons and bosons and things like that that sound almost uh, made up and sort of are sometimes. Cosmology at the other end of the spectrum looks at the big picture, the really big picture, how the universe with its stars and planets came to be. It also has some strange nomenclature. They, they, They talk about something called wimps, and they have dark energy, and they have dark matter. So they're, they're doing pretty well in uh, making those kind of interesting names up. Uh, but these two fields do, do have some things in common. You can't really know about one without knowing about the other. So this hour, we're going to bring them together for you and get an update on what's happening at the frontiers of both fields. What well, parts of the puzzle are still missing? And uh, what can the Large Hadron Collider tell us? We're, we're waiting for that to come online possibly by the end of the year. Also, how does string theory fit into all of this? We've got some of the biggest names in the, in the universe here to talk about it at the campus of Arizona State University, broadcasting from the first annual Origin Symposium. And if you're here in the audience, I invite you to step up to the mic. We have a microphone right here in the middle. If you come down to the aisles on the sides and wait for us to give you a little uh, signal, you come right up to the mic and ask your question. Also, you can phone it in, 1-800-989-8255, 1-800-989-TALK. Also, you can go to our group at uh, that's Twittering us. At, that's Twittering at, at Cy Fry if you'd like to send us a note, at Cy Fry, or in Second Life or uh, any other way that you think you can uh, reach us, and we'd love to hear from you. Our, our guests, let me introduce them. Lawrence Krauss is Foundation Professor in the School of Earth and Space Exploration and the Physics Department at Arizona State University. He's also the inaugural director of the Origins Initiative here at ASU. Good to see you again, Larry. Nice to see you, Larry. Thanks, Lawrence. Uh, all next to him is Michael Turner. He's a professor in the, in the Departments of Astronomy and Astrophysics and Physics at the Kavli Institute for Cosmological Physics at the University of Chicago. Welcome back to Science Friday. Good, Good to, to be Michael. here. Uh, next to him is Brian Green. He's professor of mathematics and physics at Columbia University in New York. He's also the author of many books and TV shows and stuff, you know, I'm sure. He needs no introduction. Brian, good to see you. Thank Again, you. thank you. Uh, also with us is Stephen Weinberg. He's professor of physics and astronomy at the University of Texas at Austin. He won the Nobel Prize in physics in 1979 for his work in quantum uh, mechanics. Welcome back, Stephen. Hello, Ira. Good to see you. Uh, let me begin at that end of the table, Stephen. Let me begin with you. What don't we know? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... okay, just a simple little question. What don't we? And, and we will have an hour to talk about it. So, we. We understand the way uh, particles and forces work uh, down to a certain scale of distances, uh, maybe a hundredth or a thousandth the size of an atomic nucleus. But when you get to distances smaller than that, um, we just, for example, light waves with a wavelength less than that, we really don't know how they behave. The laws of physics are not well understood. Um, That's the sort of thing that will be explored at the Large Hadron Collider. It's also the sort of thing that you need in order to understand the early universe, because in the early universe, times were very short. The size of the universe doubled in a tiny, tiny fraction of a second. Light, in the time that the size of the universe doubled, could only go a very tiny distance. And you're getting into distances as that small that are beyond our understanding, and in fact, even much smaller. Um, So in that realm of the very small, very short distances, very short times, very high energies, uh, we don't know the rules Mm -hmm. that govern matter. Mm -hmm. Brian Green, but all four of you are theoretical physicists. You just get up there in the blackboards and write those equations, and there are a lot of stories about you were your theoretical physicist versus experimental physicist, which we won't get into at the moment. But uh, how do theoretical physicists then attack the problem that Steven Weinberg is talking about? Well, it's, it's a really tough problem, and one of the approaches that we have been very successful at in the last 20 or 30 years is taking little baby steps. 
So we have some well-established theories. Einstein's general relativity is the one that we use for describing the large objects, galaxies and the entire universe, the real big scales where gravity matters. And quantum physics in various guises is the structure that mm. we use to describe the small things that we've been talking about, the molecules, the atoms, the atomic particles. And we have been trying to increase the domain within which those theories can be made to work through various approaches known as quantum field theory. String theory is perhaps the most ambitious of these approaches, which tries to whole hog, put together the laws of the big and the laws of the small into one theoretical framework mm -hmm. that might be able to go way beyond the scales that Stephen was referring to and perhaps allow us insight into the physics of the very, very early universe the physics of the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. So we try to go step by step. Uh, Michael Turner, is it possible for us to test out these theories? I mean, you know, we talk about the Large Hadron Collider coming on now. Will that help us examine in whether these theories or, or particles exist? Um, I, think how, I think so. When you asked our don't know list, it's much easier to describe. We don't know what 96% of the universe is. That's the dark matter and the dark energy. And the dark matter, we think it's a particle, and we actually think that particle could be produced at the LHC. And so if you're a cosmologist, you actually call the LHC the DMF, the dark matter factory. What, what particle would that be? That you? Um, well, we think it's a particle implicated at the scale that Steven Weinberg was talking about, a particle that weighs maybe 100, maybe 1,000 times what the proton does. And uh, one name for it is the neutralino, the lightest supersymmetric There's particle. There's that name again. How did you come up with a name, a neutralino? Well, we, we're going to change that eventually. <laughs> but, uh, uh, the, the, the focus groups don't like it so much. But uh, I think the goal is, I think we've got a very good chance at the LHC to produce the dark matter particle. And that would end this 70-year-old mystery that started with astronomers, uh, Fritz Wicke, showing that there just wasn't enough mass in the stars to hold the universe together, going through this period where this connection between the very big and the very small came together and dark matter was uh, a central focus point, recognizing that there's not enough atoms in the universe, that's the 4% we do know about, mm -hmm. and that uh, implicating a new particle. And the LHC could be the place where we uh, tie that story up, produce that particle, and give it a better name. Well, do we ever know what this dark energy is? So I think that's what gets everyone excited in, in cosmology. That's the next big problem. And there uh, we feel like the solution may be a lot longer out. So we, we're not so focused in what it is. Mm -hmm. It might be something as simple, and I put this in quotes, as uh, the energy of nothing, quantum vacuum energy. Or it might be something as complex as the breakdown of general relativity. And right now, uh, if you asked any one of the panelists, we could wax poetic about either solution. Mm -hmm. Lawrence, you want to wax poetic? Uh, <laughs> well, I did uh, want to add that the, yeah. we, the neutralino is Italian, which is one of the reasons that we, uh, we call it that. Um, but uh, you, have, you have to explain that a little bit. <laughs> well, it, you know, it comes from neutrino was right. actually, but it's oh, a long history. See, right. it, was, it, it, was, it was an Italian version of the neutron. I and, see. And I see. Uh, when it was first invented by the name by Enrico Fermi. And, but, and so we, we tend to follow those, those, those uh, baby steps. And mm -hmm. Our, our uh, nomenclature isn't always the best, as we said. But, but the ideas are fascinating, regardless of the names. And, and dark energy, is, as Michael said, is... Uh, I, actually, I wouldn't say it's the next big problem. It's the biggest problem, I think. I think, I think we'd all agree on that, that the biggest mystery in particle physics and cosmology is why empty space appears to weigh something. That's literally the case. Most of the energy in the universe, you get rid of stars, you get rid of galaxies, you get rid of all the radiation, you get rid of dust, empty space appears to have energy. And that's just crazy. It's crazy if you think about it in a general sense, but from a physics perspective, it's, it's kind of crazy, except when you apply the laws of quantum mechanics and special relativity together, empty space isn't so empty. So it's a bubbling, boiling brew of virtual particles that pop in and out of existence and in a time so short you can't see them. So you might say, okay, well, that's fine. It's just due to them. But the problem is when we apply our naive mm -hmm. ideas to that energy of empty space, we come up with a prediction which is wrong by 120 orders of magnitude, which is probably the, the worst prediction in all of physics. And that's why we're excited, because getting it wrong means there's a lot we have to understand. Well, I remember last time I talked to Steven Weinberg about this. He says one of the great mysteries is that we, there's, there should be a lot more yeah. of that stuff, right? Yes, exactly, and um, that's a problem that faced a lot of us uh, uh, de for decades. 
And um, many of us assumed, well, we know it's 120 orders of magnitude smaller than we would naively expect. So clearly it's zero for some reason that we haven't yet been smart enough to figure out. And then in 1998, uh, two groups of astronomers discovered it's not zero. It's just very small. And uh, that compounded the, the puzzle. But the puzzle is not simply that there is energy in empty space. The puzzle is uh, why there's so little of it, mm -hmm. and yet not none at all. Mm. Does it mean we need new physics? Well, we don't know. Uh, it may be. Oh, un undoubtedly, we need new physics of some kind or other. The question is how new, uh, how much of a revolution in physics will be required. Mm -hmm. um, I can just say that a lot of very bright people have broken their heads over the years trying to uh, understand the dark energy. At first, we tried to understand why it was zero when we thought it was zero, and now uh, the